New Zealand has finally dropped its COVID restrictions in late 2023, but is the damage to their national reputation already done? This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. Before we start the video, please consider signing up via the link on screen to become a Gripped Premium member, which comes with all sorts of perks and helps us to pay the bills and survive day to day. And also please like and leave a comment to help us in the algorithm. And so with that said, on to the video. Many people are familiar with the moving story of the Japanese holdouts, soldiers who fought in the Imperial Japanese military during World War II and who tragically remained defending their post in futility decades after the war had ended, wasting their lives away. Some of these troops had heard reports that the Japanese emperor had surrendered, but they refused to believe it, assuming that it was a trick by the Americans. Others didn't hear the reports at all that the war was over because their communication lines had been cut off by the Allies and mainland Japan just forgot about them or believed that they were dead. And still more felt bound by their honor to never surrender and vowed to continue fighting even though their nation had formally given up the war effort. Whatever the reason, many of these men remained scattered across remote Pacific islands defending their nation from an enemy that no longer existed. One man, Teruo Nakamura, was just 20 years old when the war started and was stationed on Moratai Island. By the time he was finally found and surrendered in 1974, he was 55 years old. He had been on the island for over 29 years after the war had ended, and he died just a few years after being rediscovered. But while this is a tragic story, however, Japan would not be the last country in the Pacific to experience overly zealous fanatics maintaining their post for years after the rest of the world had moved on with their lives. It turns out that New Zealand took Japan's history as a model for how to run a country, as only now they moved to drop their COVID-19 restrictions in the latter half of 2023. As reported by RTE this week, New Zealand's government will lift all remaining COVID-19 requirements this week bringing an end to some of the toughest COVID-19 pandemic rules in the world more than three years after they were put in place. Minister for Health Ayesha Varal said in a statement that from tomorrow people will no longer have to wear a face mask in healthcare facilities or isolate for seven days after contracting the virus. While our case numbers will continue to fluctuate, we have not seen the dramatic peaks that characterized COVID-19 rates last year. This, paired with the population's immunity levels, means Cabinet and I am advised we're positioned to safely remove the COVID-19 requirements, Ms. Varal said. Now, is it a coincidence that this decision just comes a few months ahead of what is expected to be a close election in New Zealand? If you didn't know better, you'd almost think that the Kiwi government is bribing voters voters by briefly lending back to the public some of their stolen freedoms. It also seems noteworthy that at no point within the government statement did they actually apologize or acknowledge any wrongdoing whatsoever. They simply made a logistical argument for why lifting the restrictions practically makes sense at this point. The Prime Minister, Chris Hipkins, actually said people should be enormously proud of how the pandemic was handled. While the country's extreme zero COVID policy may have saved some lives in the very, very short term, this was accomplished by leaving tens of thousands of their own citizens stranded and languishing overseas and isolating the country from the global community like some kind of paranoid international pariah. Not only that, but their lockdown was not even successful against later strains of COVID such as Delta and Omicron, forcing the New Zealand government themselves to admit that their zero COVID approach had failed. So in short, they decimated their own tourism industry and economy in a way that will take years to repair. As a state, they forcefully arrested their own citizens in droves for protesting against vaccine mandates while politicians suppressed civil liberties in a China-esque way. And in the end, they didn't even achieve what they wanted to achieve, namely less COVID infections. In fact, even now, as they drop their restrictions, case hospitalizations are rising, yet they have finally decided to tap out despite the core facts of the situation remaining the exact same. 
COVID today is exactly as safe or dangerous as it was last year, depending on your perspective. Nothing has actually changed. And yet, after an extra year of this nonsense, the government has finally decided to throw in the towel and call an end to the farce. I can tell you one thing, New Zealand and Australia may be beautiful countries with many wonderful citizens, but after witnessing the state's insane handling of these issues, I'd certainly think twice about visiting either country, and I don't think I'm alone in that. Please like and share this video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gripped needs all the assistance it can get, and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.